Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I have the actual pleasure of introducing Wes Hurley, writer, director, and genius behind Potato, Dreams of America, a great film we happened to see earlier this year at Tribeca. Wes, say hello. Hi. Thank you for Wes. having me. Wes, your movie is so weird. I love it. <laughs> Could you uh, kind of describe it for, for the audience that's going to listen to this? Yeah, so the film is a is an autobiographical dark comedy. It's about my growing up gay in the USSR and then coming over to the US with my mom in the 90s. So it's a very faithful account of what my childhood was like. And um, yeah. Which is a little bit of quirk knocked in there, right? Just for good measure. I like that. That's the best part. Now, with this movie being that it's autobiographical, there's a lot, uh, there's a lot of you in the film. What parts were you uh, were a little bit raw for you to talk about when it came to making a movie that's so personal? Uh, a lot of it was, and that's one of the reasons why I um, I named it when I was writing the script. I named the character Potato. I mean, it was one of the nicknames that my mom used for me, but it was ultimately why I used it in the film is to to write you know, to write the story, I kind of had to make it in the third person and disconnect from it a little bit. So using the nickname Potato was helpful in that regard. I'm sure, I'm sure it was, man. And I tell you, when, when you watch this, there's, there's some huge comedy. What went into deciding the cast? Because again, you're casting yourself and you're casting your very own mother. So what went into casting that? Yeah, um, so the one of the actresses that plays my mom um, in America, she was kind of my muse for starting the whole, whole project. Like I, um, Mariah Sikaminski is her name. She was a Seattle actress. Uh, she's now a uh, artistic director of Pittsburgh Public Theater. And she's an amazing actress. I always wanted to create some, like a vehicle for her to star in. And um, that was one of like an impetus for me to write the script. Um, and then when we actually started shooting, you know, I, I started looking for kid actors, for a kid actor to play me. That was really intimidating because I've never worked with kids uh, and I wasn't sure if we we're going to find a good one. And we were so lucky. Um, I found Hirsch Powers because like just an amazing young actor, his first feature, but he's just so natural in front of the camera and fun to to watch. And um and then the same with the other two actors, uh, Tyler Bocock, who plays like a 20 teenage slash 20 something potato. And then uh, Sarah Barbieri plays Russia. And they're both, you know, 19, 20, so really young. Um, I found them through audition process. And um, yeah, it was interesting. I'm always impressed when young actors are so intuitive because I always wonder like where, you know, they don't have that many life experiences to, to, to draw from, but somehow um, the talented ones really have that depth and it's, it's just fascinating to me. <laughs> I, I think that that's really interesting. Now in the movie, there are obviously are, are directors who influence Potato um, as a gay man and introduce him in, into the comfortability of being that. But let's ask you, who are some, actual who are some filmmakers or directors musicians people that inspire you and is it still uh greg Araki? <laughs> you know greg Araki, it didn't inspire me visually but what inspired me was his kind of audacity of making those stories you know i i wasn't exposed to gay cinema in russia obviously so when i came to the states and started watching greg Araki's film um films um, I think also as a teenager, you know, you have so much angst and anger and like a gay, you know, being a gay teenager living with a really conservative stepfather. I, um, I had so much of that anger and Greg Araki's films really resonated for that reason because they're so like angry punk rock kind of, um, you know, sensibility that really spoke to me at that age, like, you know listening to Marilyn Manson and watching <laughs> living. That was my- You just, you just described the mid nineties angst right there. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean, visually, I really like filmmakers that are interesting visually. Um, so like Tim Burton and David Lynch and um, Guy Madden. Um, 
Pedro Madavar probably is my favorite filmmaker in terms of like what what I personally want to do, you know, and him taking this sort of pulpy, cheesy melodrama plots and turning it into high art is what, you know, that really resonates with me. Yeah, there's a uh, there's a pulpism to a Maldivar, that's true. But you know what else there is that is prevalent in your movie is a surrealism. Mm -hmm. More so toward the beginning than at toward the end of the film. Would you say that was done because in the beginning, Potato's a kid and you're seeing the world through Potato's eyes so things seem surreal? Or was that done uh, just on accident? No, it's absolutely, you're right, you got it. It's, uh, you know, childhood's perspective on the world where things are kind of skewed and bigger than life and uh, the line between reality and fantasy is kind of blurred. So, you know, like I, I really was, you know, super Christian when I was a kid and I was talking to Jesus, obviously, <laughs> him sitting on the couch next to me. But, you know, taking that extra step into magical realism, which I always appreciate it especially in coming of age stories i think it's super appropriate because you know kids do see the world in a different way yeah i think that's true and they see the world in a much more visual way too and i think he, mm -hmm. you nailed that you nailed that tone perfectly in your film oh, thank you. so much so that i even caught it so, <laughs> thank you so there you go now i gotta ask you this is the hardest question we ask any guest that we are lucky enough to have if you had to watch two movies for the rest of your life, and those are the only two movies you could watch, what two would you pick? Oh, gosh. Um, I love Bound, you know, um, Wachowski, um, Sisters movie. Yeah. <laughs> that was, yeah, gosh, that's such, such a hard question. There's so many. I mean, Drop Dead Gorgeous is like my comedy that I go to. It's it just, it always makes me laugh. But it, I mean, it's tricky because, you know, I mean, I'm sure you've had that same experience, like your tastes change with yeah. age. So like yeah. some of the that I used to think were like the best, but now like, uh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that happened to me a lot, especially going from a teenager to an adult. Like I was like, yeah, that movie's not as good as I thought it was. So I get where you're coming from with that answer, but Bound had a different await. That's my, that's a film that awoken to me. I'll tell you that. Seeing Jennifer Tilly, I was like, hello, hi. <laughs> I can deal with that. But yes, the Wachowski sisters, well, genius. Forget about Bound uh, too, because uh, I discovered it at the same time as like Iraqi's films. But what I really loved is because at, at that time, and even to still to some degree, like all of the gay movies were about like coming out or basically coming out or discrimination or, um, you know, maybe a romantic comedy relationship thing. And what I loved about Bound is that it was just like a, a cool, sexy, you know, caper crime movie. And they just happened to be gay. And it was, that was so refreshing. I think that was the first time that I saw something like that. And I just there's like, there's like a primalism to it, right? Uh -huh. Especially like Jeff Attilian and Gershon's chemistry. It's not this lovey-dovey chemistry it's a primalism between the two no, of them and animalism right uh-huh yeah it's just so interesting that you you say that because that's that's kind of what i was thinking when you said down i think i think about the animalistic sexuality of of these two ladies and the wachowski sisters captured it perfectly in that movie i i love Bound, so that's a great pick i really like that now i'm gonna let you go here in a minute because you know 15 minutes is perfect length for any sort of thing like this uh what would you want to say to people if they want to check out potato dreams of america and where could they check it out if they wanted to uh thank you um that's a good question we have so many screenings coming up at festivals right now like there's one in seattle and new york and dc and denver um just film festivals i think the best thing would be to maybe follow us on instagram it's potato dreams film and then uh, we try to update it with you know screening info and then our exciting news is that next year um, we'll be in theaters. So um, don't know exactly yet, but early the first quarter, whatever that means of 2022, we'll be in theaters and then it will be on Blu-ray, DVD and streaming at some point. So um, nice. but if, if you follow us on Instagram, that will, I'll, you know, keep updating that info. He does update it. We are, we are following. You guys should follow too. I am looking forward to my Blu-ray in the mail, yes, <laughs> of Potato Dreams of America. Guys, you should check this movie out if you get a chance to and you happen to be at one of the film festivals. Wes Hurley made, made a great comedy, a great movie, and 
it opens up a great discussion about the nature of LGBTQ, both in America now and back in the 90s when Wes was, this timeline happens. You guys should check it out. And thank you so much, Wes, for being here with me today. I appreciate it, bud. Thank you very much. Really appreciate you having me on.